I know there's got to be some here. Someone standing up. Yay. It's very exciting. He's getting applause from another room. That's how yes. popular he is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my name's Tim. Uh, originally, I'm from Eastern Washington, but I moved to LA going on three years ago. Welcome. And Welcome. Uh, my fear is that we've irrevocably crashed the environment, and over the next 50 years, we're going to have the worst uh, disasters in human civilization. That's just common sense. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I'd love to say something to make you feel better, but I yeah. totally agree. Yeah. yeah. I, have the same I think fear. we're fucked. All right, thanks for the validation. <laughs> <laughs> I really do think we're fucked. I, yeah. I, I, I kind of, I kind of, I used to be really idealistic about the environment. My undergraduate degree is in environmental policy, and um, and uh, and I drive an electric car, and I compost, and all that fucking hippie bullshit. And uh, and I, I, it's too late. I think it's too late. And I don't really know how to feel about that. You know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. It's probably another reason why I was always ambivalent about having kids. Are we exchanging fears? We are. So then, uh, I'd write mine down. Sure. What are they? Uh, you know, I don't. I most of the day, I, I I don't feel. So I have to remember what my feelings are by writing them down. Um, and ironically, you're going to an app. For I them. do. I am going into an app that I did not fucking create. Um, <laughs> where is it? Oh, it has to sink. I wrote it. I want to see some other people. Yeah, let's line hear up another. Too. Let's hear another fear or love. Come on yeah. up here while I look up while I look up right. how I feel about right. life. Uh, I'm actually strangely still very scared of nuclear war. Oh, interesting. Because yeah. mostly from playing uh, Metal Gear Solid. <laughs> <laughs> I know Aisha especially appreciates that. Oh, this is great. Okay, so first of all, are you also sca- are you also like are, do you love snakes that turn into cans of food? Yes, <laughs> yes very much. So. Wouldn't that be great if that happened in real life? Oh, the snake! I shot it. Now oh, it's a I can of beans. Cut it with a knife, and he turned right. into a box. Yes. I would love that. My fears seem to not want to download. Um, uh, oh, here we go. So, um, yeah. So I played a lot of Fallout. And so I am hyper-focused. Yeah, right? By the best. So I'm hyper-focused on, like, end of days preparation. That is, like, a big... That takes up a big part of my, like, of my mental energy when I'm, when I'm not working. Is like, do we have enough food and water in the house? You know what I mean? How, like, what's the shelf is life? Is there a of perimeter? This? Yes. Well, there's... I, I'm, I, my, my property is defendable, but it's not ideal. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm planning on moving to a compound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, I look at, like, ingress and egress points I think about that a lot and I also honestly don't think a fear of the end of the world is that like look the world has ended hundreds of times already it ended in Rwanda it ended in in New Orleans it's ending now in Syria the world has already ended for a lot of people you know that feeling the end of days the cops aren't coming my family's been cut to pieces I have no food that's happening all over the world um, and I think that the the kind of the arrogance that it couldn't happen here is um it's just it's it's naive, isn't it? So uh, like a culminating end, I don't know, but like a, a periodic way, end, I think that could happen. And you should never sing Happy Birthday at TGI Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> Children's birthdays. Uh, go ahead. Oh, um, first of all, I fear being recorded. Um, Sweet. Right uh, you could look at him walking through it. Closer to the uh, microphone. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> my fear is is that I'm gonna keep pursuing artistic interests and never find out which one I'm actually good or passionate about. You'll never know it except doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's, yeah. I totally get that one. My fear is that I'm going to run out of ideas. That I'm going to wake up one day and I'm going to just be out of juice. Dude with awesome hat. Oh, thank you. Um, is your question going to be ska related? <laughs> <laughs> zoot, zoot, riot, riot! Okay, go. I, I, I make ska wood carving, so. You're, you, well, get a, awesome. you get a figurative no, kiss don't. on the that's, mouth, buddy. That's called joke. Yes. Oh, okay. I loved awesome it. Joke. I thought it was artistic yeah. and subtle. Okay, on to the heavy stuff. Okay. Um, I'm Just a little afraid... bit closer to the mic, if you would. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to... Uh, that I'm going to fuck up my marriage the same way my dad did through uh, selfishness and and self-centeredness. I th- Period. Yeah. yeah. You're brave. Thanks for saying that. Yeah. Out loud. Thank That's you for that awesome. one. That was really brave. And I think the fact that you're aware of that is a good sign. Yes. A really good yes. sign. You're married. I am. How long have you been married? Uh, we've been living together since 1988, and we've been uh, married since 1995. Rock and roll, long time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm married. I've been with my husband since 1989, and uh, married since 1994. So, um, the, the, I have a piece of advice. This is not an, a fear exchange. Where did Guy and Hat go? He's right here. 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah, okay. So guy in hat whose face I cannot see anymore. Um, first of all, I think the thing that you said, Paul, was that, yeah, that you, the fact that you're aware of it is very important. That you don't want to fuck it up. I used to think that. I used to think that was like my father. You know, because I mean, I think one of the reasons my parents broke up was that, you know, people were fucking around. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that was part of it, you know. And um, I used to worry that, like, I might end up, that might be the end of my marriage, that I might do that and ruin my marriage. And the fact that you're thinking about it and you're concerned about it, I think is really important. Because I think people who are not self-aware are the ones that do things to damage their lives without seeing what they're doing. Um, but marriage is super hard. It's super hard. So the fact that it feels hard is okay because it's hard. I think people hit a hard spot in their marriage and think there's something wrong with me or my marriage when in reality, marriage is fucking hard and it just stays hard until one of you expires and is released sweetly from the bonds of (laughs) fucking (laughs) your mortal coil. Um, (laughs) Thank God, sweet, sweet release. So, um, I think that a big part of what's kept me married is being honest and being able to be really um, like letting him be human and him letting me be human. I don't accept perfection. I don't, I don't expect perfection out of him. That's nothing as a marriage killer, no. like trying to change your partner. No, like he just gets to be the duty is and I don't, I don't, he, and that's it. Like he, like he literally doesn't have to change at all for me mm. and he's been nice enough to let me be that way as well and I feel like if there are things you need out of your marriage that you're not getting, you need to articulate them because either you say them out loud and you figure it out or one of you is fucking furious until you blow the marriage up. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, staying, staying, Faithful to the same person for your whole life, man, that's like a fucking math problem that nobody is able to solve. It's like the hardest fucking thing. It's like a Rubik's Cube. You can pick it up and put it down, pick it up, put it down. How the fuck does this work? And, and nobody, you know, nobody ever really gets it right. And that doesn't mean people don't stay faithful their whole lives, but it doesn't mean they don't think about it every motherfucking day. Yeah. So, um, you know, anybody who's expecting you to never think about it and never look at other people and never yeah. consider what it might be like to have sex with another person it has an unrealistic expectation about what a marriage is. A yeah. marriage should be your best friend who lets you be yourself and lets you be your best self and your worst self and, um, you know, doesn't get mad at it when you fart in bed. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Next, next question. Did we, did we do your fear? No. no What's I your next fear? No, I change a fear? Yeah. Fuck. Well, I said the one about failing to get everything done that I want to do before I die, right? That's, yeah. that's a big one. That's probably like the biggest one. Oh, and the other one I really, it's, uh, uh, is not following through. Like I hate, I'm, I'm like, a, like if I start a book, I have to finish it even if it's a terrible book. Mm-hmm. And that's a metaphor for my whole life. Like, I, like start, no finish is like the number one thing I just, I abhor. Hey, Hi. <laughs> and, we're, uh, and we're running short on time, so okay. let's. Well, no, 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 no. I was just going to say, yeah. let's um, just bounce them back and forth uh, yeah. if we if, if we yeah. can. Okay. Well, I was <laughs> to bring it. I guess uh, a little farther out. I just realized that growing up as a kid, I was such a big sci-fi geek. But now I'm so af- I realize I could never actually go into space if I ever had the chance because mm-hmm. I'm so afraid of dying mm-hmm. in complete silence. Mm-hmm. 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 Like, yeah. like it's just it's just that fear of like, oh my god, if the future actually comes here, I could never actually confront it because mm-hmm. dying in space is so frightening. Mm-hmm. Especially now that gravity came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Drop acid and get into a sensory deprivation tank. Mm. Your next one? Um, I, I, I have a really highly developed uh, germophobia. I'm super OCD, hand washer, surface cleaner. I've, I've actually put disinfectant in my mouth before. Oh. <laughs> Delicious. It's just alcohol, you pussies. Yeah. <laughs> Aisha. Hi. Um, this is Mo, by the way, who is the king of the forum, who helps the podcast so much. Can we give him a round Yay, of applause? Mo! He lightens my load beyond compare. He allows me to just let the forum do its thing and turn over all the worry. So I just want to thank you publicly. That's oh, nice. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. More along the lines of the, the ska dude uh, with a little more heavier fear. Uh, I'm, no longer, <laughs> I'm no longer suicidal, but I, I really am afraid that I'll never get to a place where I'll stop being... Uh, ambivalent about being alive it's like I can take it or I can leave it uh, because of um, anxiety yeah yeah think, that's a really that's good you know, I think that's, that's pretty common too yeah, yeah I think that you should not feel alone like that I think most people 
most people are confronted with an ambivalence about life. Yeah. Very brave I, of you to say it out loud. I have many days of, is this all there is? Yeah, yeah. and many days of, what is this going to amount to anything? Yeah. And that's why Mo's so good in the forum. Yeah, you know, you know and, yeah. and you know, your parents made this decision for you, right? They put you here. None of us decided to be here. It's a decision you make every day once you're here, right? So you have to make it for yourself every day. But he loves you and you add value to his life. So that's enough, that's enough of a reason, right? Nah, he's oh, like, no, ah, you do. Kind of, do. a little bit. Let's do uh, one more of yours and one, one more uh, of, a, of a listener. Oh, I don't just get to co-sign or... everybody else's fears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll exchange with you. Go ahead. You have beautiful hair. I have, oh, I've, thank you. I live in constant fear of not having as nice hair as you do. So yeah. that's that. Okay, It's good. all right. It's okay. <laughs> uh, I have a fear. I don't know if this is more of a pragmatic thing, but I have a fear that um, as a person who was born kind of like after... 19, uh, 1987. Okay, that, stop talking. Go away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go uh, my generation this is kind of like more like a, like a Gladwellian, Mal- Malcolm Gladwellian mm-hmm. thing, but like me and everyone in my generation isn't going to be able to focus for more than five minutes on any given thing mm-hmm. because I can't do that. You know, you can't really like kind of ever focus. Mm-hmm. Like focus is a really uh, big You know problem. what I, I suggest is one, once a day, go to a coffee shop you like um, maybe with a friend or meet people there and just sit down, turn your phones off and, and talk masturbate. to each other. Oh, that wasn't what you were going to say? That wasn't it? That wasn't it? Talk oh, to each other for an hour. Yeah. And uh, that, that help, helps me. But then again, I was born in 1963. Right. So. Uh, one fear that I had for a long time was that like, I would die with things unsaid. But I think I've resolved that fear because I just say everything to everybody. <laughs> you know, and I wake up every day and I go, so if I die today, like, is there somebody who doesn't know something that they need to know? And then if there is, I tell them right away. That was a good one. Thank, thank you. Let's, thank you. Yeah. Let's go to. Uh, let's go to some loves. Who who has some loves that? Uh, oh, please don't tell me. Then back up. Yeah. Uh, I love video games. Yeah. Been playing them for twenty six years. I will never stop. Cosign. Yeah. Never apologize. Never. Never apologize. Okay. I just cosign that love. Yeah. Absolutely. I love uh, like extreme expressions of. Um, of like, of mundane things. So like, I'm on a, I'm on a diet all the time because I work in this fucking idiotic business. So, um, so I, my husband and I went to this ice cream store uh, in Portland called Salt and Straw, and uh, we stood in line, and then we got a double scoop of waffle cones, and then we ate them in the store, and then we got back in line, and then we got another <laughs> double scoop, of waffle yes. and we ate that shit in the store. And then I said. Fuck you, society. And then we went and then we rode away on our bicycles. It was the best. That's was awesome. The best. Yeah. So I like ice cream, apparently. That was my love. That was one yeah. of those. I, like, I love yeah. ice cream. Uh, the, my name is Ron. Um, my love is just a simple hug. Oh, you big sweet. That's great. I can't believe that we've never had that one in the two and a half years. Ron, you're adorable. A simple hug, yeah. Ron and I waited for our food the other night for an hour. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, like, I, I really love books. I love reading. God, I'm a nerd. And you have I, a favorite I, book? Uh, I love post-apocalyptic fiction, specifically. Did you like The Road? I loved The Road. I love Cormac McCarthy. I just read Blood Meridian, not post-apocalyptic, but its own kind of apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Um, A really, really difficult, wonderful book. And um, not um, enough description of sagebrush. No, could could, how many how many words are there for rocks? Apparently, all of them. They're all of the words are about rocks. Uh, And um, and uh, oh God, and I love like I loved. Uh, I just read Zone One, and God, after oh, the Reapers are the angels. Oh, I'm just all a zombie fiction. Vi- just all when shit's going down. I'm ready for the fucking end. That's what I want to say. <laughs> I am prepared for the end. Yes. Yeah. I love that I haven't had a panic attack since I started medication. Yay! And I love. <laughs> and I love the sweet sense satisfaction when I get an unassisted like headshot in a sniper video oh, game. Oh, very nicely done, <laughs> lady. Fine. Na- do you ever, do you, yeah, so you yeah. ever feel a little badly? You're like, 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 I get so ambivalent about it. I'm like, I shoot, it's like, so I get like a. Not in Borderlands too, because everyone responds, so you're not really killing them. Oh, okay, so you good. Just mow them all down. It's oh, great. they de- they fall and then they go. Sorry, thanks yeah, for shooting. Yeah, everyone me. comes back like you do, so it's like. Oh, I see. Okay oh, good. This is a multiplayer. That okay, good. That's yeah. nice. It's yeah, fun. that's good. Yes, I will, excellent. I will even sometimes if it's been a while, I will just turn to a teammate and shoot them in the head. Oh, the best. <laughs> But computer that's, generated, not not, yeah. not. I like I like multiplayer when your friends are in the room. So then after you kill them, you just turn to them and go ah, because <laughs> it's it's better without the headset, right? Like when yeah. they can feel your breath on their face, yeah, uh-huh. like the laughter of your mockery, like touching their skin. That's I love in, in uh, Ghost Recon when you get an awesome uh, silenced rifle and a perfect hiding spot, and you oh, just pick people nice. off one by one. 
I like it in uh, in Halo multiplayer when you get a gravity hammer. Mm. There's nothing better than just and then you're just running around the map, literally. I've like cackling. <laughs> and you always know who has it because whoever has it is cackling hysterically <laughs> while everyone else goes, what the, what, who, when, why, what, where, who, why? They'll turn to Bugs Bunny trying to get it. Yeah. <laughs> Just that's my favorite. Gravity Hammer is my favorite. Any, yeah. any, any energy weapon, but Gravity Hammer specifically. Uh, I love cosmic horror stories, especially by the writer Thomas Ligotti because it makes my, uh, it makes my problems feel like nothing against the vastness of the universe. That was That's so beautiful. beautifully put, and I swear I thought you were going to say cosmic whores. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> what you said was much more elegant and beautiful. Yeah. That was nice. Um, I love coffee. I love coffee like a person. And I said the other night when we were together, I said, and I, this is a true story. I was I was at the beach with my husband's family, and I said to my husband, I can't wait to go to bed so that I can get up in the morning and drink coffee. <laughs> and I like I think about it like all night. I'm like, and then in eight short hours, coffee. I love it so much, and I drink way too much of it, but I've cut out all of my other vices. Like, I stopped drinking, and I stopped doing all the other fun things, and so now coffee is like the only thing in my life. So that's kind of just turned into a sad thing, didn't it? Okay, yeah. No, it was nice. Um, I'm going to co-sign the video game one first, yeah. and then um, I also love uh, Kurt Vonnegut books. Oh yes, you yes. do, you adorable person. I got to hear him speak uh, at my university when I was in college, and it was so amazing. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah. Yes. I love... Uh, well, I love gardening. I have a garden, and I grow because when I was young, like f- we were never so poor that like we didn't eat, but we like you know there was like you didn't get snacks. Like there was lunch, and then there was dinner. You know what I mean? There was no like let's see what's in the fridge, and so uh, I ho- I was a food hoarder for a long time. I, I still hoard food a little bit, but I'm working on that. Like I now I'll go and clear all the food out and give it away every three months to a food bank. But I used to really hoard food that I was never going to eat. Um, so and we grow a bunch of food now, and so. Um, I love that. Like I we mm. grow tomatoes and I just bring these huge bowls of tomatoes in and then my husband and I have this game where we where we eat the tomatoes and we go, man, these taste just like tomatoes from this door. Yeah. <laughs> They're almost like real tomatoes. <laughs> um, so yeah, and then I, 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 I like to grow stuff and then I like to, to, to pickle it. I like to do some stuff that's like uniquely Caucasian. You know, just like <laughs> I made pickles. I, I, put, I put up some pickles the other day. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Betty Crocker, bitches. <laughs> I love walking out to our garden and getting peppers and tomatoes and uh, and basil and yeah. making an omelet and then making it's, shit right like yeah. right after like it's real food and like it's it could have come from the store right and, and knowing that it couldn't be any more nutritious yes. than it is at that organic. moment organic there's still yeah. some bugs on it yeah <laughs> I love it I love that due to this show I have somebody that I can tell my fears to every day Aww. and they validate it oh that's, that's so adorable. beautiful. This is an, an, an uh, like a painfully adorable group of people. Yeah, <laughs> everybody here deserves a hug, yeah. even especially a guy who loves hugs. I do. A hug I, loving I guy. I fucking love He's hugs. Adorable. I love hugs too. I hug everybody. I'm a really un- inappropriate hugger, and like I hug my lawyer and stuff. And he's like, "Why is this happening?" <laughs> it's like, so this is not the currency of business. Why are you touching my body? Um, hi, lady. Who Hello. loves Mass Effect? I do love Mass Effect. <laughs> but I was gonna say that I love being a girl that likes video games, Star Wars, and Star Trek, and action movies, and all the other things that aren't really girly. And I love being that Yay, kind of person. I totally co sign That's a loves. great one. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. And let's let's do Susan's, and then we'll we'll, we'll end you. with your uh, with your last one. Um, Susan. If you could just turn the mic towards yourself a little bit. To, what uh, happened there? Yeah. There we go. I'm bigging it up. Um, I'm Susan from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Hi. And um, <clears throat> I play the French horn in a concert band. That's and very cool. I love it. Even though it's not like you can bust out the French horn around the campfire. Right. <laughs> I get more pleasure out of doing this than most things. You get that swell of music and everybody's in tune and it just, it's the best feeling in the world. That's, That's awesome. beautiful. That's I love really that. That's really wonderful. I love that. What is, the, what is the Beatles song that has the amazing French horn solo in it? I think it's Penny Lane. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that's beautiful. And did you ever hear the story about that where, um, you, you know, the, the soloist just played like this amazing improvisational solo, the one that they kept in it. And, uh, and one of the Beatles was like, that, that was good. Can we, can we try it again? And George Martin just said, that was the most magnificent thing that's ever been done. You do not dare ask that person to do that again. 
<laughs> yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Let's end with your last um, one. I had like I had like ten different loves, but uh, but this is the one I think I'm gonna uh, put at the end of the. I um. I love being married, and I'll say to to preface this that I am not a like a traditionalist at all. I didn't think I would get married. I thought I would be like, I'm going to be a businesswoman, and then at 50, I'll take a lover. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I never thought that I would get married. Um, and I, I think that um, marriage is very, very difficult. I think fewer people should get married. Many fewer people should get married. People should wait longer to get married hmm. uh, because it's very, very challenging. But what it's been for me is um, a safe place to be the worst parts of me like the to express the, the the worst and the pettiest and the weakest and the smallest parts of me but it's also something that makes me try to be my best self all the time I think that's why people are so hyper aware of their feelings in marriage because hopefully what your, your marriage is forcing you to do is to try to be a better person than you are uh, and it's been this incredible kind of like lifelong meditation of like how to be a better person and how to be a kinder person and how to be a more accepting person, uh, not just of my husband but of myself. Uh, and uh, and no marriage is perfect, but what I find is that um, it's this thing that the longer you have it, it's I don't know, it's like an old baseball mitt, right? It just gets mm-hmm. better and better and better. It looks like shit, right? It looks like t- your old baseball mitt looks like somebody took a dump in it, but it just feels good on your hand. And that's my marriage. It looks like someone took a dump in it, but it feels good on my hand. <laughs> what a great what a great note to close on. Many, many thanks to uh to Aisha Tyler. Um really enjoyed uh having her as a guest. And uh yeah, go check her uh her podcast out. Um because she needs more listeners. Um, Before I... Everybody I know is bizarrely beautiful. Everybody I know is bizarrely beautifully fucked up in some weird way. Bizarrely beautifully fucked up in some.